thank you very much for coming out and joining us today for today's uh, topic, which is um, architecting your UI for maximum scalability and performance, uh, in particular on the STEM32 product line, so whether it's the MCU or uh, the MPU side of things. So just to let you know, uh, today's session uh, will be recorded. And so, so definitely if for some reason you need to drop off or perhaps you have a colleague that you thought, you know what, they really benefit from this, uh, this recording will be posted and in our webinar page on cranksoftware.com. Um, and it will be there for on-demand uh, access so that you can go back to it at any point in time. Also, because we have uh, two additional uh, presenters, uh, we're going to be having a Q&A session at the end. So if you do have any questions at any point, uh, please use the chat window, which you see on your screen, to uh, submit your questions. As well as feel free to follow us uh, using the hashtags of either uh, Embedded UI or uh, Crank Storeboard or even STM32 Scalability. So at any point during it, feel free to kind of you know, throw some, some, some social posts out there, whether it's on uh, Twitter or maybe it's LinkedIn or Facebook, and, and definitely kind of uh, follow on and participate. So your today's speakers, like I said, I'm uh, Scott Snyder. I am the product marketing manager here at uh, Crank Software for our storyboard UI design and development tool. Uh, we also have on the line Soren Mickelson. Uh, he is with uh, STM, and he is the business development engineer for graphics. As well as from Crank Software, we have Gary Clarkson. He is our field application engineer uh, that's located in the EMEA region. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to kind of jump into uh, the STEM32 product line and devices and really kind of talking about what sets them apart from uh, from all the other products out there and, and you know maybe giving you a little bit of kind of idea as to which product may be best for you and then we're going to jump into an introduction as to who Crank Software is and of course uh, Storyboard our UI design and development tool and then you know talking about what makes Storyboard uh, great for uh, embedded UI development maybe what makes it different from other solutions out there and then we're going to jump into a live demo followed up by some Q&A. So let's uh, get things started. I'm going to hand things over to, to Soren. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Soren Mikkelsen, and I'm a business development engineer from ST Microelectronics, uh, with special focus on graphics on STM32, and, uh, and more specifically on the graphics business in the Americas and high-performance MCUs running uh, GUIs. Um, for my part, I'll give you an int a short introduction to our hardware offerings on MCU and MPUs. Uh, but before, um, let me start with the, the, say the GUI evolution, which has been going on for some years and is still continuing to evolve. Uh, as you all have seen, products are get getting richer uh, and embedding more richer HMIs, and, uh, and users are always comparing, and I think myself too, uh, compare products to, uh, to my own smartphone. Um, with animations and, uh, and all of this. Um, and this trend is, is of course, all, also pushing our microcontrollers in the direction of being more powerful and embedding high integration and connectivity, uh, et cetera. Um, yeah. So uh, in ST, uh, we have for many years been focusing on graphical user interfaces on, on uh, microcontrollers. And, uh, and also now we are focusing on, on MPUs uh, with, the, with the STM32 MP1 series, which we'll come back to. Um, and then, and this uh, these years has uh, provided us with a large know-how of uh, both hardware and software for running embedded GUIs uh, to make sure we uh, we we meet tomorrow's need for uh, for embedded uh, GUIs. Scott, please go to uh, next slide. Thank you very much. So uh, here you have an overview of our hardware portfolio, uh, which ranges from uh, Cortex M series up to uh, Cortex A7 now. Uh, in general, I would say uh, STM32 can, uh, all our STM32 could run a, a user interface. So the choice here really depends and com comes down to uh, what kind of display you, you want to use, uh, what is the resolution, uh, what is the color depth, uh, the need of animation, full screen transition, uh, and, uh, and to, of course, together with the required application and the operating system and, and so on. Um, so uh, with this lineup, I would say uh, we range from a very simple uh, down to segment displays, low-end uh, 
mid-end resolution running low colors and 8, 16, 24, 32-bit uh, 2D animations and so on, up to more high-end MIPI DSi, LCD, uh, 3D uh, setups. So, uh, so you really have a really strong setup here, uh, offering uh, being able to uh, to meet uh, all the most needs uh, you could have for for GUIs. Um, for more advanced graphics, we have uh, selected some STM32 embedded uh, with embedded hardware acceleration for enabling more animations, more fluid UIs. Uh, doing alpha blending, video playback, and so on. Uh, and for this, I'll show you on the next slide. Uh, if you please go to the next slide. Uh, so with the stars, um, these are the series with uh, what we call advanced graphics capabilities. So we have some STM32 M4s, uh, STM32 F7, uh, S87, uh, the new series, uh, and different L4s, and, uh, and also the MP1. And of course, they give you a different level of performance, integration, uh, embedded memory, uh, package size, and so on. And all dependent on your needs, uh, you could find a, a suitable package here. Um, on top of uh, our hardware, uh, we have uh, like Crank Software, uh, who is one of our good partners for, for running a graphical user interface. So, and uh, combined with, uh, with our powerful hardware acceleration features like Chrome Art and and OpenGL and so on, you can really achieve a great uh, performance and a really good uh, user interface. Uh, and the next slide uh, I can show you here, uh, please go to the next slide, is a, is a more com complete overview uh, of, some of, the, uh, of some of the selected uh, STM32 uh, products with advanced graphics. So if we dive more into these, uh, our, our frequency ranges from 120 up to 480 on, on these specific MCUs uh, and eight, up to 800 megahertz on the MPU. Um, and uh, on, on the A7, and you also have an, an M4. Um, so, and the embedded memory ranges from a very limited boot flash, uh, having, let's say, down to 64 kilobytes, 128, uh, all the way up to two megabytes of internal flash. Um, and for the RAM part, you you can find products embedding up to 1.4 megabyte. And uh, for the frame buffer, you could you would have on these specific ones uh, 1.1 megabyte for for the frame buffer. So uh, so running a really powerful uh, UI from internal RAM, not needing external RAM. Um, yeah. And uh, we also do support a wide range of display interfaces. So like SPI uh, interfaces. Uh, displays embedding RAM and parallel HH and so on, and also the more common RGB TFT uh, uh, through our LTDC and, uh, and VPDSI interfaces also. Um, so a wide range of, of choices here. Um, and, uh, and if you need more sophisticated UI, uh, then we recommend you look at MCUs embedding Chrome Art, um, which could be a good choice here. And if you need, uh, video playback, then look at the uh, MCU for embedding uh, motion JPEG. Um, and for for more specific on uh, on the hardware acceleration part, so in these uh, SGM32 products with advanced graphics capabilities, we have the Chrome Art Accelerator. And uh, this is a really powerful, uh, efficient 2D image copy, uh, copying we can do here, some transparency, alpha blending, uh, direct memory access, pixel format management, and so on. So uh, this is these operations, uh, if you do this on the UI, it will offload uh, the MCU uh, if you need this to do other things. Uh, so uh, for some UIs, you can actually experience a really, really low uh, MCU uh, uh, load. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have the hardware JPEG codec uh, for, uh, for running a video playback. Uh, and last but not least, we have Chrome GRC, and this is an IP allowing uh, you to uh, to save some RAM if you uh, use uh, round displays. Um, so instead of writing the corners in the frame buffer, which is not visible for, for the users, uh, we're not doing this, so you save around uh, 10, 15, 20% uh, of, of RAM. Uh, and sometimes this can be uh, be helpful if you need to fit an internal RAM or if you have a limited uh, space of external RAM. Uh, yeah, so if you check the next slide, please. 
So this is just to emphasize on two uh, very important parts we have. So uh, the first one is our cost optimized uh, value lines. Uh, so I, our H7 uh, and F7 series, uh, we have what we call value lines. These are uh, are embedding uh, the uh, the essential flash, so the boot flash. Uh, so with this setup, you'll need external RAM and external flash of your own choice. Um, they are still embedding really good advanced graphics features for the Chrome Art and the GFG controller and so on. And there's a large, a large package choice uh, here. Um, if we go in the other direction, uh, embedding more memory, uh, then we have the new 87A, 87B series. This is uh, embedding 1.4 megabyte of internal RAM and uh, you have 1.14 for, for the frame buffer. So you can actually run uh, an application with 480, 320, 24-bit uh, uh, without needing external RAM um, uh, and, and resolutions below that and also 16-bit, of course, saving uh, you bomb cost for not needing external RAM. This is also like the value line embedding, uh, Chrome Art, uh, JPEG codec, TFT controller, Chrome GSC. So uh, a really powerful one and uh, and the last package choice also. Um, and uh, on this particular one, we have uh, uh, graphic support starting from QFP 64 pins. Uh, yeah. And the uh, next one. Thank you. And uh, here we have our STM32 uh, MP1, uh, which is our newest addition to the STM32 family. Um, so the STM32 MP1 comes on top of the STM32 microcontroller series uh, to open the door for more, uh, for higher performance uh, in terms of connectivity, multimedia, in combination with Linux, Android, and etc. So if you really need uh, real 3D GPU uh, uh, stuff, this is a really good choice for you. Um, and um, with this addition, last in 32, uh, our customers can build uh, platforms ranging from M zeros all the way up to eight sevens. Uh, so yeah, we really cover the whole range of, uh, of the UIs, I think. Um, the SM32 MP1 embeds a dual ARM Cortex A7 running up to 800 megahertz, and you have a an M4 also running at 209 megahertz. So really combining the best of both worlds when it comes to Linux and real-time uh, OSs. Uh, sp more specific on uh, the graphical uh, user interface, the MP1 embeds a 3D acceleration uh, running at uh, 533 uh, megahertz with support up to wide XGA resolution. This is around uh, 2080 times 800 in resolution around that. Um, the LCD connectivity is either through, uh, let's say, an EPDSI interface, two lanes, or you have a 24-bit uh, parallel LTDC you can also interface your, uh, your display with. So with this resolution, you can run simple GUIs uh, and up to really uh, high-end GUIs also needing 3D animations and other uh, kind of things. Um, as the MP1 comes in different flavors, uh, it also comes without the 3D support. Uh, so if this is not needed, this could be a better choice for you. And you can still run a, a, a really good UI, uh, which will use the uh, the MPU powers and, and the processor power instead of the, uh, the GPU. If we go to the software environment part, uh, we provide an open ST Linux distribution, uh, Yocto framework uh, plus tools. And it also leverages the uh, or our rich STM32 cube tool uh, suite, uh, which I hope a lot of you know about already which is a really good uh, software suite. Uh, and this is also being leveraging by uh, the STM32 MP1. And if you want to try it out, the MCUs, all the MP MPUs, uh, and try it in combination with Crank, uh, we have different disco eval boards you can, uh, can buy online. Um, and uh, I know there's a lot of great demos uh, you can flash uh, from Crank on, on these different kits. Um, and you can probably ask in the chat which one uh, could be relevant and how, where to find it. Um, and you can also find really good support, online documentation, and you can visit our community asking questions on, on, on this uh, if relevant. Uh, so I invite you all here and uh, yeah, we will do our best to, uh, to support you here. Um, yeah, and this is a really great way of trying out uh, Crank. Um, that's uh, that's it from uh, from my side on uh, on STM32 introduction. If you have any questions, please please feel free to uh, to ask in the chat, and uh, 
I will try and answer you, or I have my colleague, Mike Hartman, heading uh, graphics in uh, in the Americas uh, with uh, with us also, and he will uh, also assist us here. Um, and uh, last but not least, it could be quite interesting to learn more about which uh, STM32 platform you are thinking about combining you know, with uh, Crank and running a GUI on it. So, so please uh, fill in your your uh, your answer here so we can get an input. And if uh, this is not uh, the right, uh, or if, this is, if there isn't any uh, right answer for you, you can uh, put in the chat maybe uh, which uh, which uh, platform is uh, relevant for you. Uh, but this will be quite interesting to see. Um, and Scott, you will probably end the, uh, the poll when uh, when it's ready. Yeah, I'll just give, uh, give a couple more seconds for everybody to vote. Uh, I'm showing about 10% of the people have voted so far. There we go, so votes are coming in. So definitely, uh, which uh, STM32 uh, MCU or MPU series are you considering using in your next project? And uh, creating maybe potentially a crank uh, storyboard-based uh, UI for us. So I'll just give it a couple more seconds, and then I will close the poll. Uh, Thank right you now, much. I don't know if it's live, it's, uh, but we're seeing about uh, 50, 56, 50 percent uh, on the F4, uh, followed closely by the H7 uh, at 22, and then about 20 percent uh, for the M, uh, for the MP1. So yeah, so the final final numbers were 58 uh, percent have said the, the F4, 21 for the H7, and 18 for the uh, MP1. Okay, thank you very much. I will hand it over to you, uh, Scott or, or Gary. Perfect. There we go. So hopefully everybody's uh, my screen advanced. Everybody's seeing what uh, saying crank software right now. So yeah. So just before we jump into to the live uh, demo, and I pass things off over to Gary, I just want to kind of quickly introduce you uh, introduce you all to. Uh, crank software and storyboard, like I said. So, so definitely, you know, if this is the first time you've never heard of crank software before um, this presentation, I can guarantee that at some point in time that you probably have interacted with a product uh, that is running a UI that was built using uh, our UI development software storyboard. Because as you can see, uh, we support a range of different industries from smart home to industrial and a range of different products. So just to let you know, Crank Software is a software and a services-based company uh, that is headquartered in uh, Canada. Our leadership team has an extensive background uh, in embedded graphics and systems with over 20 years of experience each uh, within that world. Uh, we also have a large global customer footprint from uh, Fortune 500 companies to small organizations. Uh, so it doesn't really matter uh, how large you are, or how small you are, how how many products are you going to, it's going to be a, a limited run or is it going to be this mass consumer market? Uh, you know, we have different customers that we have worked with closely to make sure that they provide the best user experience possible uh, for your customers. So we have uh, over hundreds of millions of devices that are out there in the field uh, running using a storyboard built UI. Uh, and also, we offer uh, our customers access to a global distribution partnership network um, for, for global or localized support uh, for, for your needs to address your needs. So like I said, not only a software company where we built Storyboard, but we're also a services-based company. And what that means is that if you have the idea or the vision, but maybe don't have the in-house expertise, uh, we have, uh, a, we have a, a team of, of, of app developers that can help you uh, create that product, create that vision, take that vision, bring it to real life. It doesn't matter what stage, whether it's just maybe helping with the design, maybe if you need a prototype created to really kind of advance the product with your executive management team. Uh, maybe you know, you've, been, you've been building it yourself using uh, Crank Software Storyboard, but maybe you want to like maybe have a second opinion, like how can it be further optimized? It doesn't matter what you need. We have the services and the team there to support you. So, so definitely, um, you know, if you are maybe at a stage where you don't know where to begin or, uh, or you, you're trying to hire people, but you're having a hard time hiring those qualified people, uh, reach out to us and find out how we can help you out today. So why did we create Storyboard? Well, well definitely, like I said, you know, um, when it comes to developing UIs for today's and better products, things have really become increasingly more challenging. So like, 
uh, Soren was mentioned earlier, the user expectations have been elevated, right? Today's consumers really expect this intuitive and, and modern uh, experience, especially with devices that have touch screens, um, because of the fact that every day we can reach into our pockets or our purses and we pull out this, this powerful device with a beautiful touch screen that provides the smooth, intuitive experience. So, so you know, not only does it mean that for the physical hardware itself, but the, really the quality and the smoothness or the overall user experience uh, with its graphical user interface has really set an expectation. In fact, the user experience has really quickly become a defining part of today's products. Uh, with its UIs being one of the main factors that, that today's products are being measured on and what often drives the value consumers see in it as well as their purchasing decision. Also, integrating evolutions in technology no longer only means making hardware decisions anymore, but really how can those technologies be incorporated into the user interface? And of course, you know, any time uh, time is lost, or our resources wasted or coding changes need to occur, these all create delays in getting the product to market on time and even sometimes on budget. So, so all of these have really made it increasingly challenging uh, to really develop products with a UI in today's uh, world. And that's why Storyboard was designed. It was really designed to remove the barriers or issues that are typically associated with uh, UI design and development. So, like I said, it's based upon over two decades of experience in designing and implementing embedded uh, GUI solutions for a broad range of industries. So, the founders of Crank Software really kind of when that when they they created Crank Software, they set out to build a solution that could help remove the inefficiencies that that not only frustrated them, but their developer colleagues when it came to developing UIs. Uh, for embedded devices. You know, when it comes to storyboard, what we often hear is powerfully simple yet sophisticated. That is what our customers tell us. It's, it's easy to use interface, really enables them to create UIs more, more quickly and more efficiently. So, and this is all because the, the, the unique architecture that, that the, the founders put into storyboard. So they decoupled the front end UI design from the back end logic. What this really allows is the designer and developers to kind of work in parallel when it comes to building the UI application, thereby making Storyboard easier to, for, for you to get started early on the development of the UI. It really makes it easier to embrace design iterations because let's face it, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when it's going to occur. And of course, helps reduce the complexity of developing uh, UIs for an ever evolving embedded hardware world, or even maybe embedded product lines that you may have, uh, all helping and resulting uh, faster time to market for your products. So let me break that down a little bit. So when it comes to really kind of helping accelerate development, UI development can be fast tracked by starting the UI design in tools such as Photoshop or Sketch. And then once the, the, the overall UI look is, is, is ready, it can be imported into storyboard. So, and then they become the building blocks for the UI. And then from there, UIs can be brought to life using Storyboard's integrated animation tool that allows you to create, edit, and review animations all directly within the tool itself, uh, as well as critical usability testing or gaining stakeholder fear, feedback by, by doing, uh, using its in-tool prototyping that can, and simulation tools that can be deployed on the physical hardware itself or maybe onto a mobile device that so you can take with you. Of course, once UI development begins, designers and developers can continue working in Storyboard's parallel workflow environment uh, to really help remove the pain and struggle associated with iterations that naturally occur. Like I said, and when it comes to UI design, everybody has, has an opinion, like whether that button should be bigger, smaller, over to the left, over to the right, should it be blue, should it be red? And so, you know, when and, and when you take it to that critical maybe usability testing, you're going to get a wealth of feedback uh, back of it. So, so really, you know, making it easy to incorporate those changes is what the team set out to do. So, um, you can easily introduce design changes that don't impact the progress or cause a complete teardown of code with Storyboard. Um, it allows you to completely modify the U UI look simply by, you know, 
again, the designer going back to Photoshop, making the changes in Photoshop and re-importing those Photoshop files back into without having to create an entirely new application or overriding the prior development work that was done. Even more importantly, Storyboard provides this really unique tool called Graphical Compare and Merge, which allows you to remain in control of those iterations throughout the entire process. What it allows you to do is, you, as you import it, you can simply go through and select which changes you want to import, whether it's all of them or just a select few, really making it easier um, and a more an efficient process uh, when you have multiple users or multiple people really working on creating that UI. And then, you know, last but not least, with all the vast choices of, of hardware and operating system combinations that you have, it, you can guarantee that most likely that storyboard created UIs will run on it. And that's because storyboard was created to really be, provide a platform agnostic tool so that way it really de-risks your projects by introducing this framework that easily supports technology and design changes uh, at any point, really providing your UI with UI flexibility. So taking it up a notch from just, not only is it from scalability, allowing you to scale from MCUs to MPUs or vice versa, but allows you to uh, have a portability. So allowing you to kind of swap out parts of your, your technology stack at any point in time. So maybe for example, uh, ST Microelectronics introduces a new powerful, but more cost effective uh, MCU while you're partway through the development. You can easily take advantage of that. And as long as we support it, basically port that UI over to it and gain the, the, the benefits from the power and the cost savings for your overall bomb. And then of course you have reusability, which really allows you to, to embrace multiple product lines that you create that UI once and you can scale it up, you can scale it down and you can reuse it across different products. So really what it comes down to, what makes Storyboard different is that we're not a code generation framework. And Gary will go into a little bit about that when he talks about it. Um, so, you know, we're not about, you know, creating everything in C++ and then having to compile and having to rechange that code, which really allows you to lower the barrier to entry uh, when it comes to uh, UI software development. Um, also, like I said, the, that decoupling of the front-end UI from the back-end logic with a really well-defined data model and event API in between really provides a clean separation between the UI development and the hardware deployment really helping your UI that you create to be more resilient to design changes. Um, also, you know, unique features, like I said, such as uh, Storyboard's graphical compare and merge tool really enables your teams to remain in control of UI refinements throughout the entire process, as well as we work and we do extensive development and testing uh, with our product to ensure that our Storyboard engines take full advantage of the specific board features uh, such as proprietary graphic libraries or 2D or 3D hardware acceleration or, or memory management functions that so removes the heavy lifting for you to have to do that. And that's one of the great things is that, is that our engineers have worked with the folks at ST Microelectronics, uh, you know, got the, the, the BSPs testing, 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 and have optimized the runtime engines that you deploy onto the hardware to run that UI really taking the, the, the guesswork out for you so it's been all done for you. So that's one of the, you know, a couple of the, the things that really makes uh, Storyboard different. And at that point, I'm going to hand things over to Gary and uh, let Gary kind of uh, drive the rest of the demo. The first thing I'll do is show you, um, show you the Photoshop import feature of Storyboard. This is a very quick way of kickstarting your HMI design. Um, it allows you to bring in the design features and assets from, uh, from a Photoshop model and recreate that inside of Storyboard. So if I sh show you the uh, design first, what we have here is um, something that's been created in a PSD file. Um, it's, a, it's in a form of a, uh, a kind of a wall thermostat. Uh, so you has got uh, six, five or six screens there. Uh, if I drill down into one of those a little bit more, um, let's look at the weather screen. Uh, you'll see that uh, it's made up of uh, a number of layers. Um, uh, just locate the weather screen there. Um, number of layers that uh, are stacked on top of each other. Um, so if I, for example, hide, hide the menu layer um, and the background layer, you can see how things are stacked up. That just leaves the, the middle layer. Uh, 
this is a very common way of doing things. It's uh, it's it's how graphics designers uh, go about designing UIs with uh, with tools such as of, uh, such as um, Photoshop. So this is using a, a free online tool, Photopia. Um, you don't need the full version of Photoshop to be able to um, to use this import feature. We understand the the file format ourselves inside of Storyboard and are able to to take apart the PSD file and recreate it. So let's see that in action. So what I have here is a, is a, an empty workspace. Um, what I can do is uh, bring in the new design from uh, from Photoshop, and here's the the thermostat design we had earlier. This is uh, this is set to be 480 by 272, the same size as the LCD panel on many dev boards. Um, and what I'm going to do is create a new project. So this could easily uh, be imported as uh, extra screens into an existing application. But in this case, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a whole new project. And you can see here that all of those screens have been brought in. Um, you can see here also that uh, if I go into a thermostat screen, we've uh, we've set this as the, the application start screen. Um, and in this case, you can see the layers recreated. So I can show and hide those as, as we could in the, uh, in the Photoshop world. So uh, this menu here is something we'll be working with later on in an application development, but for the time being, I'm going to hide that. Um, and also you can see here at the bottom, there are uh, there's, uh, some icons here, the weather settings, the thermostat. These are going to be useful for navigating between the screens. Um, now we've got a more sophisticated design in mind, but uh, um, for, for now, what we're going to do is uh, show just the overlays so I can click on them directly. Uh, so that allows me to uh, to add uh, navigation features. So I'm going to add an action. Um, everything in storyboard is triggered, um, and trigger is uh, something like a touch. In this case, we've got uh, gestures and various other things. So a touch event uh, is going to trigger an action of a screen transition. And whenever you trigger this uh, event, I want to go to the thermostat screen, uh, and I can. Uh, I can quickly add this to uh, the same thing to the weather and the same things to the setting screen. So again, touch screen transition and uh, weather in this case. Uh, finally, the setting screen. So you can see how quickly it is to do this. We uh, we encourage the design teams actually to do this themselves. So uh, it's, uh, Storyboard is designed to be used by both developers and designers. Um, and it's, it's pretty simple with a little bit of guidance to get this up and running. And it doesn't require much uh, software development, if any. So uh, let me save that. And uh, what I can now do is, is run that uh, as, a, as a, a simulation on my desktop. Uh, you see here I'm on, the, uh, on the, the, the first screen and I can, I can navigate to my other screens here using the, uh, the icons at the bottom, which I just, uh, I just animated. And what we've brought in also is uh, some extra features inside of, uh, inside of the, uh, the PSD file. Uh, based on the, some naming standards and notifications, uh, we're able to, to make the... Uh, make the behaviors of buttons and such. So the, there is a guide for this. There's a, there's a getting started quick reference guide for uh, for how you lay out the Photoshop um, side of things uh, and uh, some of the naming standards we use. But uh, that's available on our website if you want to go take a look. So what I'll do now just to save some time um, is to, uh, to flick to one that I've already prepared. So I've added some extra uh, navigations, um, some other behaviors, that, uh, that make it a little bit more interesting and closer to uh, to a real application. Uh, what's, what I should do while I'm here actually is that it's on the navigator view. We were looking at the model view, but on the navigator view, we've we've uh, we have uh, all of our images which are in the Photoshop model have are now been broken out uh, and our assets within Storyboard that we can start working with here. You can see all of the individual components of the screen. And even um, looking at the, the piece of text in the middle here, we've brought in not only its position X and Y, but the value of the text. So I can I can change that on the screen. It's font size, it's color and position. So uh, and this is really quite a, uh, a sophisticated import mechanism. Um, we're not using bitmaps here. So if I run this, I'll show you uh, some of the extra extra capability I added. Um, on this screen, I uh, I use the plus and minus to uh, not only uh, limit the, uh, the 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 value, but also allow you to to increase and decrease like you would in an application. You can also see 
just behind here, there's uh, there's uh, an animation I've added to to add a kind of a background glow that uh, that is blue if it's uh, if it's cooler or red if it's warmer, uh, and some simple logic to limit the value. So uh, how I've done that is using uh, some Lua scripting. Uh, pretty straightforward, it's uh, very self-evident. And um, you can see here there's a couple of functions. If I go to the actions view. Uh, you saw before we were doing the screen transitions um, using using the touch. We've added a, a couple more here. So there's a there's a, a an action a triggering um, on a touch to call a, a Lua function. When in this case it's decrease temp on the minus and increase temp on the plus, which calls these two functions here. So uh, I'm doing some basic uh, logic here to limit the uh, the the temperature and also update a couple of the elements on the screen, which is uh, the text value you saw changing. What I've also added is uh, is uh, some uh, animation, uh, a, a custom animation to make the red and the blue glow. And if I show you that very quickly, um, it's very simple here. We're, we're choosing to create this dynamically um, uh, at, uh, at the runtime using using the, uh, the Lua command line features. Uh, and here we're going to create, uh, create an animation add a step uh, and another step so we're fading in and out and this is kind of the the glow and uh, glow off uh, feature so so that's that's all i've added really um we're ready now to uh, to take that design and uh, and export it to the target so one thing that's most important to look at is uh in terms of the resources we have available so we have uh, we have now a metrics tab which you added in in the uh, Storyboard 6.2, uh, so 6.1. This allows us to uh, to look at the model um, and its impact on the target environment as we're going along. You can see here that um, that uh, several of the uh, the uh, the features um, in in terms of images uh, take up quite a lot of space here. So 500k of memory, the RAM is uh, is uh, the bit the background. And if I look at that on the disk. Um, We'll see that it is something like 21k. So this is a this is a, a native compressed image. So a PNG image is stored um, in its compressed format. So that has uh, some implications. Uh, one of those is that although it takes up not very much uh, storage space, it takes quite a lot of RAM space. So we've got to uncompress that and uh, inflate that at runtime. And so we'll need some uh, intermediary buffers and some processor cycles to do that. So this is something that you can look at from a, uh, either an overall uh, individual resource basis or indeed on each screen. So you can start to see which uh, which which uh, which of the screens have the the highest resource impact. So uh, when we're looking at deploying this to a target, uh, we're we're going to be exporting this model um, using our export configuration. And in this case, uh, what I'm going to do because I'm deploying it to a, a microcontroller target is use our C, um, C++ resource header format. So this takes those model files, then those assets and script files, and uh, represents them using our storyboard virtual file system representation. Um, what this is going to do, this is going to um, take those models, encode them uh, in, uh, in, uh, in binary form and lay them out using a structure. So to save a bit of time, I've already done that, uh, and I can, uh, I can show you that that file here. So uh, that's going to export to then create this model file automatically. You can see here that here's the here's the model, the storyboard model, uh, and we've created a uh, metadata um, and added that to the top, which is useful for uh, for revision control. And if I go to the very end, um, you can see here these are the uh, this is a virtual file system layout. This is the uh, the kind of the way that we're representing those resources in our in our uh, header file um, as blobs. And you can see here, here's one of these resources um, represented as, a, as a, a character array. And so the, uh, this, the virtual file system is, uh, is very interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's very lightweight and very straightforward. Uh, and it means that you don't have to run a full file system on your microcontroller. So um, as part of the export, what we can do is, is, is look to, to uh, optimize the way that we're uh, deploying these. So if I switch back to the overview here, you see, unless we, uh, you know, if we, if we keep this as standard, we're going to be taking these, these compressed models and files and expanding them at runtime. So we're going to be taking up a relatively large amount of memory. This doesn't include the, uh, 
the frame buffer size, so the, the number of pixels uh, on the screen times the color depth. So that will be added on top of this as well. Um, so we've got five megabytes of um, SRAM and 1.2 of flash. So um, what I can do is create a custom export configuration. Um, and this is a new feature in Storyboard we added quite recently. Um, uh, here's one I've already created. So instead of using a file system deployment, I'm going to create a profile for virtual file system, so for Flash. Um, and what I've been able to do now, instead of exporting in native format, I'm going to be exporting the, 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 the files, the, the PNG files, in, uh, in uncompressed form. And when I do that, you see here that uh, that allows us to, to reduce quite dramatically the amount of uh, SRAM we're going to be needing uh, at the cost of uh, expanding them and storing them um, in, their, in their uncompressed form. So now we see the, the 5 megabytes is now on the, the flash storage. So this is how you can trade things off. You can actually even do this on an individual image basis. So um, you can choose maybe the background image and, uh, and store that uncompressed um, or compressed. So that allows you really to tune the, uh, the application target uh, and really um, take those settings and you can use those to bake in that, those decisions, um, optimizing and tuning for the amount of memory on your target board. Um, and we've got a header file now, uh, uh, something, a resource that we can add to our C project and, uh, and really um, get to work on the, the second part of the application, which is the, uh, the engine and the uh, integration steps. Now we have our, uh, our model exported as a resource header file. We're able to start looking at how we integrate that with the uh, target. In this case, we're going to be using a uh, H745 Cortex M7 based discovery board. Uh, and we're going to be using free RTOS as the, uh, as the runtime environment there. I'm going to switch over to uh, to the project in uh, in IAR embedded workbench here, and uh, here's the uh, here's the model header file that we created, um, and I've added that to the project just like any other resource. So it's now a, a, a header file inside the project. Um, so along with that, we need we need to look at the way that storyboard um, assets and uh, and libraries are integrated with with your existing code. So this is this is a simple application. Uh, if I look at the main here, um, we we really have uh, only one task. So uh, we're going to be creating um, creating a storyboard main task. Uh, this would sit alongside any of your other tasks that you have in your backend code. But uh, but this is a standalone application here. Um, and really, it's uh, it's very simple. We're, we're using all the standard. Um, Cube STM32 cube drivers and 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 setup screens, so uh, setup code. So we're we're really uh, building on something you've already got. Uh, and you see here that, uh, that we've pulled in a whole bunch of drivers um, and HALs from from the standard uh, STM32 cube. So in terms of storyboard integration, we have uh, a, a a file here called the uh, the SP Engine task file that we we give you a template for. And really, this is uh, again very simple. Um, we have we have the main task, which is literally going to launch the uh, launch the application to, to kickstart storyboard, um, and this is going to be loading up uh, in this case uh, storyboard libraries, um, which are added in the form of static libraries. Here we have a whole bunch of them. Um, these are these are uh, very much the constituent parts of Storyboard. So uh, everything is a, is a library and a plugin. So if you're not using a particular feature or a library, then you can remove it to to reduce flash space. In terms of uh, integration, uh, we've got a main task um, that kicks off the model. Very shortly after that, um, you'll need to spin up a, a maybe a one or more tasks uh, to do the 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 uh, input. So uh, we'll run this asynchronously with the main display task. And here, what we're doing was we're sampling the uh, the touchscreen state. Um, so uh, and that's going to be that's going to be raising events here to to send into Storyboard, just as we were looking at uh, previously. The touch events are comprised of a uh, a press and release and motion. So those are the those are the the raw materials for our our user input. Um, and in terms of the uh, the application, if I show you how it's integrated, um, 
here we're we're looking at some uh, some setup code um, initial configuration for the LCD calling standard uh, standard BSP functions here to set up the, uh, the, the, the touch screen and the the physical LCD interface um, here we're using uh, another function which is called back from storyboards to allow you to customize the frame buffer and display formats um, and also in this case we're uh, We're using the DMA2D features, um, so this is the Chrome Art Accelerator. Um, you see here we're configuring it uh, and setting the begin and end for the transfers uh, for the, the frame buffers and and, uh, and also the screen dimensions and colors, color format. So that's all pretty much template code. Um, very little code to add on top of your application. Um, so what I'll do now is uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll run this on the board. Um, which is uh, which is already pre-flashed to save a bit of time. So um, if I uh, show you the the board itself, there uh, I'm going to launch that on the target, and uh, you'll see the the user interface that we designed earlier uh, is being flashed, uh, downloaded, uh, just the debugger setup there, and we should be able to run that on the target board and show you it uh, in operation. Okay, so you can see here we got our uh, our uh, uh, animation uh, with the the uh, the, the surround uh, with our flashing. We've got plus and minus there. Um, we're able to navigate between the screens. Performance really is very good. Uh, the Chrome Art acceleration is pretty impressive. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, that storyboard running on the MCU target. So for the next stage. Um, Perhaps if you consider you have uh, a requirement where an entry level version of a product would be based on a microcontroller, an MCU, um, perhaps maybe uh, a, a more premium, a, a high end, uh, a, you know, top end version of a product would perhaps have a, have a, a larger display and maybe uh, it has uh, got some extended uh, capabilities, maybe some connectivity, uh, you know, internet access, that sort of thing. So in this case, you're going to be looking to uh, to uprate or upgrade the uh, the application performance. Um, I'm going to be using something a bit more powerful. So here we have uh, have a, a, a an MP1, a SCM32 MP1 um, based device. This is a Cortex A7, an application class uh, processor. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be uh, making use of Linux. So this allows us to leverage all of the operating system features and functions that you get for free in Linux, such as connectivity and and also uh, more advanced drivers and, uh, and graphics capabilities. So if we switch back to storyboard, uh, the first challenge really is to uh, is to look at the, the the scalability, the scaling requirement. Um, so before we had uh, we had our application designed for 800 by four, uh, 800 by 272. Um, we're going to be needing to use uh, 800 by 480. So the first challenge is to, to resize or rescale the application. Um, so one way I can do that, and I'll show you quickly, is to copy that application. Uh, and I'm going to uh, make a clone, which is a 800 uh, by 480. I'll call that resize. OK, so that's going to make a, a second copy of that project here. Um, if I close this screen. Uh, model here. Uh, I open this one. So here's uh, here's the same model we had before. Um, if I go to the uh, the properties, you can see here that we have a, a, a capability to resize automatically. So this uh, this is a a, a hugely uh, important time saving tool inside of Storyboard. Um, we've learned from some of the challenges our our customers had that uh, resizing and rescaling an application is a very tricky uh, thing to do if you're moving every pixel manually. Uh, so we built a, a migration or resize wizard. Um, so I'm going to create a second version of my models and assets. I'm going to call that uh, 800x480. Uh, uh, and here I'm going to uh, resize and scale it. So we're now going to be moving 480 uh, to 800 and 272 to 480. Okay, so you can see here that uh, it's uh, 166 versus 176 percent. So it's not a, a um, any exact um, 
uh, form factor or exact aspect ratio change, um, but it's close enough for our purposes here. So what we can do now is uh, flick back to our application and uh, here we've created a new version, a new model uh, of the application and all of its assets uh, recreated within Storyboard and um, and that's uh, that's now resales and uh, resized and scaled. Um, it may not may not be easy to see, but uh, the the zero uh, the circles are, are slightly slightly elongated. But uh, but for for first um, uh, for first use case, it's uh, it's pretty good. Um, and if I run that, what we've been able to do is resize and rescale that application. We could also reskin it as well uh, with a storyboard reimport of a Photoshop model. Uh, but what we've done is crucially retained all of that logic, all of that behavior that we added before. So the navigation logic we created um, and also the, uh, the animations. So all that has been scaled automatically for you and it saved a huge amount of time. So now uh, what we're ready to do is uh, is deploy that. So um, what I've done here is uh, I've I've got one already set up. Um, okay, I'll just reopen that one. Uh, and if I if I show you the uh, the target board itself, um, so what we have here is uh, um, is the uh, MP1 dev kit running uh, our standard demo, which you can download from uh, Storyboard website, so from Crank Software. Um, and this uh, this basically is a, is a quite a nice demo. It's got multiple features as a home automation application, and as a kind of a front end menu, um, you know, that's uh, that's uh, allowing you to navigate around and run a few uh, a few demos. So, so what we want to do is replace that application with our our new one that we've just created. So, uh, with uh, with Linux, you you're, you're now deploying in a different way. Um, so what I can show you is the uh, the second way of deploying. So we're no longer using um, uh, an application header file. So we're using a file system. So the individual files and assets that we saw in the in the in the file system view and the navigator view, we're able to deploy that not only um, to a file system but also using an SCT, SCP transfer to the the target board. So this is using an SSH link. Um, it's going to deploy all of the files um, in uh, in a folder onto the target file system, and where we're going to execute a script file, which I'll show you shortly, that launches that and runs. So um, what this will do is uh, kick off the the transfer. It's copying down all of the files that you'll see, um, basically deploying to the target, uh, so that each each file and asset is deployed. And now you can see on the target here that that same application we've resized and rescaled. Uh, is running on the target. So this is uh, this is instead running on the the, the Linux um, OpenGL version of our runtime. You can see here we've got our, our navigation and our um, behavior. So we've able to take that application, resize it, rescale it, redeploy it onto a completely different uh, runtime. So uh, just pulling up some connections to the target now. Uh, you'll see here that um, I have a, a uh, an SCP file view of the the target, um, and in this case we've we've got two different runtimes there. Um, so I'm running as default the uh, the OpenGL version of our runtime. So um, uh, we've uh, you know we've got uh, we've got an application running. Uh, if I type top uh, on the target here, we'll see that actually Storyboard is not doing anything until we we actually move or or make it uh, kind of behave. So this is the event driven stuff. Um, and even then, we're, we're still like a very low utilization, so we're not using lots of CPU cycles. Um, to really show the scalability of Storyboard, um, I've got an application which has been modified to run both with and without some uh, 3D behaviors. So if I flick over to Storyboard, I'll pull this application in. Uh, it's something we put together um, a little while ago to, to demonstrate um, a, a white goods type of application. Um, so in this case, uh, it's, a, it's a recipe oven. So I'll pull it in now and I'll store that in an archive. So if we look at the, the project itself, we've got two versions of the application. One is uh, using 3D and the other one is a 2D version. So the differences are actually subtle, but if I show you, uh, show you running first on my desktop, I'll um, kick that off here. 
what we have here is that we're using kind of a collapsing rotating effect and that uses one of our 3D control options. Um, so this is requiring some of the GPU. Uh, and if I show you the, the same application but running in 3D mode, we can see here that we've lost the rotation but um, we can still do the uh, the graphics and the, the behavior is almost the same but not quite using the high-end requirements of the GPU. So uh, what I could do, I'll just show you this, uh, this running on the target board if I deploy that for you. Um, let's pull up the, uh, the target board as well. Um, okay so we're going to deploy that again just as we did before. Uh, we're going to be using um, the OpenGL acceleration version of the runtime. I'm going to deploy that. Uh, hopefully you should see that replace the demo we have. This application's got quite a quite a few um, additional images so it takes a little longer to download but you can see here that uh, the application is running quite nicely. We've got our 3D spinning effects on the target board. Um, oh. I just close that one. Let me run it again. One of the features we have here is uh, is uh, only copy the changed or missing files, which is quite useful in this case. So I'll download it again, and this time it should come up pretty quickly. So we've not changed anything. Uh, tap on the screen. You see here we got uh, we got a rotating menu. Um, this is really quite high performance, uh, really interactive user interface. Okay, so um, that's really all I wanted to show you now. Some uh, some nice features there. This is just a just a way to illustrate the you know the range of features you can use uh, all the way up to 3D uh, um, accelerated graphics and, and some quite rich user interfaces. Um, the fact that this is all in storyboard and we've been able to do this without writing code uh, allows you to really scale up or scale down and leverage your your investment in. Uh, it, developing with storyboard in, in your application in the first place. So uh, I hope that's been interesting and uh, I think um, we'll leave it there. Back to my presentation. All right, so just to kind of wrap things up, just to kind of drive home uh, some of the great points that, uh, that Gary spoke about, uh, definitely when it comes to um, crank software storyboard and more specifically for, uh, you know, the, the ST Micro STEM32 product lines, uh, definitely, it really kind of provides a single tool uh, for your UI development, uh, regardless of hardware. Um, like, a, like, like we talked about, that it can easily, you can easily scale up from from the MCUs, from like say the H7 to the MP1, or easily scale down from the MP1 down to something like the H7. Uh, really allowing you to easily create. Uh, you know, if you have a product line that has, like Gary said, a low end and a high end unit that, that wants to leverage maybe the, the, the powerful but cost effectiveness of the, of the STEM32 MCUs or, or maybe some of the, you know, rich 3D kind of capabilities of the MP1, you can easily do that with Storyboard. Uh, also, it's that the collaborative workflow, like I like talked about, that decoupling of the front end UI design from the from the back end development, back end logic, really allows you to really kind of have your both your designers and your uh, your software engineers, uh, you know, working together in this collaborative workflow, allowing them to really kind of fine tune the user experience uh, that you want your product to have within the UI, and then easily being able to adapt to it uh, at any point in time. You know, again, with that, like I talked about, the, the flexibility that it really provides for your UI to not only kind of scale, but to, to kind of pour, to change out at any point in time, um, uh, different points of, of the, um, of the technology stack that you may have that really allow you to have that smooth, intuitive kind of you know, rich performance. Uh, and then of course, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, easily kind of, you know, leverage uh, the low memory footprint, uh, whether it's low RAM, flash footprint uh, that is offered across the MCU lines. Uh, we support a wide uh, variety of uh, RTOSs or OSs. And of course, you have that simplified development process. So really removing the need uh, for compiling and cross compiling that can really lead to uh, some time consuming cycles uh, that kind of sometimes produces an unappealing workflow. 
that requires specialized expertise um, that you know can really add to the overall cost of the projects, but also adds on time and 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 complexity where you know you don't necessarily have to 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 need that. So definitely, like Gary said, we have a variety of of uh, demo images uh, that are available for uh, a variety of the STEM32 boards uh, can be all accessed at uh, cranksoftware.com. Uh, so definitely go and check it out today, whether it's for the H7 uh, all the way up to the MP1. Also, we do offer a 30-day uh, trial of Storyboard, and the great thing about it, it isn't uh, uh, watered down or restricted. It's the full suite that you get access to uh, for 30 days, so you can really kind of kick the tires on it, you know, get a feel for it, uh, import some of those demo images onto maybe some of the eval boards that you're currently evaluating uh, from uh, ST Microelectronics for your next project, and allowing you to kind of get there and tweak and see about, you know, you know what 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 works for you. So, so definitely some key takeaways before we jump into the Q and A for today is that, uh, you know, again. Give it, a, give it a download, give it a try. You can find it at cranksoftware.com, full featured access. Get access to the Crank Software demo uh, images. But more importantly, um, we also have a help center that's there to provide you with some additional learning. So you'll, there you'll find some getting started videos. You'll find a wealth of knowledge base articles and much, much more at uh, support.cranksoftware.com. So definitely, you know, throughout the process, if, if you are going to evaluate, jump into our help center because it's just a lot of tools that really kind of get you started from the basic. And we're also offering up some advanced user training that's also accessible uh, for, from our website as well, really allowing you to kind of get, uh, take your knowledge and your ability to develop UIs uh, that are scalable and able to really perform in, in an optimized environment uh, for the SMTM, uh, sorry, the STM32 devices uh, today. So with that being said, I'm going to kind of uh, take a look at the uh, chat or the help sections to see uh, if we have some questions that have come in. Uh, let's see here. So uh, I have one right here, um, definitely. Uh, so the first one that has come in is, uh, what ST micros are well suited for crank applications? So I, I can I'm going to put that out to to you, Gary. If uh, you're still on the line. Yeah, sure. Now, um, so we've uh, obviously it depends on primarily the amount of memory uh, in the system. So uh, even with small micros, uh, we've we've got a, a an STM32 uh, L4, which is a, a Cortex M4 based um, demo. Uh, this has got a, a small 360 by 360 circular display, um, and that's uh, that's really you know the kind of the lower end. So the 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 M4 based devices with the uh, with the uh, the the LCD interfaces, all the way up to the M MP uh, MP1 really. So we we've got a set of runtimes for each family. So uh, as long as the devices themselves are uh, you know. Uh, uh, featuring the same same fundamental core building blocks then uh, we're able to run across pretty much um, anything from an M4 upwards. Um, so the key decide, deciding factor really is to calculate the amount of memory you need for your uh, application and memory and then uh, and then choose the the application processor from that perspective. Um, and Sorin, uh, I don't know if you've uh, you've got any any additional things to add? Uh, no I think you covered it pretty well thank you. Cool. Perfect. All right. Probably this one's for you again, Gary. Uh, so, um, sorry, how much RAM did that application need? So, while you were kind of building out the, uh, the demo on the MCU. Okay. So, on the, uh, the H7, um, we were running um, with around one and a half megabytes of, uh, of, of uh, memory. So, uh, that's including the the frame buffer. So if you if you think about the the number of pixels on the screen, the uh, x pixels times y pixels times color depth, which in our case I think was uh, was um, uh, I think it's configured for 32 bits. So that takes the majority of it. And over on top of that, um, with our optimizations optimizations that um, that stream direct from flash, it means we can keep the RAM overhead low. So certainly. Um, Certainly not possible on the onboard RAM, but uh, certainly uh, when we're looking at the the A3 and the B3s, then uh, that's much more feasible with a with a you know a, a sensible size display. 
so we can uh, we can really leverage the on-chip RAM uh, certainly for the primary frame buffer we, we like to run with two frame buffers one for uh, uh, the uh, LCD and uh, one to render tune so you don't see boring artifacts but uh, yeah perfect uh, I uh, yep I, I think so the, the, whoever posed the question if you didn't uh, we'll probably come back to you uh, so I have a new question um, is it possible to use other compilers and then they give an example and we'll, I'll, I'll let you answer the first one first part first uh, sure yeah um, we we chose um, in, in the demo we've we've got um, the embedded workbench from IAR um, this is pretty popular for a lot of our customers it's uh, it's available for lots of different platforms so uh, for us it's uh, it's, it's, it's a good target um, it's also got a really good compiler so uh, we find it's a very efficient code. Uh, we we can and do um, run with uh, with GCC based compilers. So uh, you know the standard ARM ones. Um, so it's uh, it's a different runtime. You, you need a different set of runtime libraries built with the the GCC runtime instead of the IAR runtime um, compilers. But uh, yeah, we can run on pretty much any OS, uh, any compiler. Perfect. Yeah. And then the second part of it was that they gave an example of of Kyle. Uh, and I know that's definitely something that uh, that we've been discussing within um, our product development uh, roadmaps. Um, so um, hold tight for that, and it, hopefully we'll have an answer for you specifically on Kyle of that going forward. Uh, if you want to reach out to me uh, specifically, feel free. Um, my email address is s snyder. That's s n i d e r at cranksoftware.com, uh, Miguel. And uh, maybe we can have an exchange about uh, about the opportunity you have. Uh, I have another question, um, and this one's probably going to be maybe to you, Soren. It's that uh, you have a question about scalability of ST tools to uh, ultra high definition 4K displays. Uh, yes, hello. Um, so uh, 4K resolution is is uh, I don't think it's in our ball area, so to speak. Um, uh, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. You'll probably need. Uh, uh, more megahertz or, or more uh, multi cores running this kind. I am uh, so I come from more embedded uh, lower end devices, so uh, so I'm not strong in this field. But uh, yes, I, that would be uh, be my my guess here. So not supported by uh, by MP1. Okay, perfect. Uh, I have another question. Uh, this one's kind of directed towards Crank, but uh, definitely. Uh, uh, something that uh, maybe uh, Soren you can address, but uh, do you have any plans to interface with the uh, STM32 Cube MX in order to get uh, the required code for MCU um, uh, initialization and just add your templates and libraries on top of it? Uh, so definitely, that's uh, something that uh, you know I've been uh, having uh, discussions with uh, the folks at. Uh, uh, to your Mike Electronics, so something it is that we're, we're we are in discussions about working towards and stuff like that. At the moment, we don't, but uh, but definitely, I would uh, I would love to have Storyboard uh, be an integrated part of uh, of the the Cube MX. I don't know, Soren, if you wanted to add anything to that or. Uh, well, uh, one point here, I think uh, so. Uh, you could probably still use Cube MX for for of course setting up. Uh, the low level part with the MCU and so on and add the uh, crank on top of this. Um, so still use some of the uh, STM32 tube chain for, for, you, for, for setting up the project and so on. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, okay, so um, I don't see any other questions unless uh, anybody else, I'll give you a, a, a couple of uh, like 20 seconds to pose whatever kind of remaining questions you may have. Uh, but while that's going to happen, I just wanted to uh, say uh, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day uh, to come listen to uh, Soren, Gary, and I talk to you about uh, uh, not only the STEM32 product lines, but also Storyboard. Uh, definitely, like I said, this is going to be recorded, so you can expect an email from us just to have the link to the recording uh, uh, come across your inbox within the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. And, and from there, again, if you have any colleagues that um, that you you may have in in mind that would benefit from listening to this webinar again they can register for it and get access to that on-demand uh, session at any point in time so with that being said um, thank you very much for your time uh, and have yourself a great rest of your day cheers yeah thank you very much have a good day goodbye thank you and take care